I've played a lot of Tetris in my life, but have you ever seen somebody start a game by doing something like this? This is only one of the absurd things I had to do in order to get the Tetris Platinum. Only 267 people have gotten this Platinum before, making it one of my rarest ever, so I wanted to show you my Platinum journey. Step one of the Platinum journey is, fittingly, beating the journey mode several times. This mode features different backgrounds, songs, and generally gets faster and harder as you progress through it. You need to clear journey mode on normal difficulty and hard difficulty. While this might feel a little bit grindy, it was a good way to get warmed up and back into Tetris. As a kid, I would play Tetris DS for hundreds of hours. I love that game so much. So ultimately, nothing in this journey mode was too difficult for me. I was able to get through it pretty easily. By the last few levels, things definitely start to heat up a little bit. The pieces drop so fast that you only have time to move them a column or two before they start to hit your stack. But as long as you keep rotating the piece, you can slide it back and forth as much as you want until you find the correct place for it. This is kind of the level of Tetris difficulty that I was used to, pieces immediately falling, but that ultimately not being too big of a deal. So with journey mode out of the way, on to step two, grinding for double S rankings. This is where the real challenge begins. In fact, two of these double S challenges are probably some of the most difficult things I've ever done in my gaming career. So you need to get double S rankings in every level in journey mode, which again isn't a huge problem, but the real challenge comes with these effect modes. There are 13 different modes in effect mode, and you need to get a double S rank in every single one of them. Some of these modes are actually pretty easy. In fact, Chill Marathon, you can't even get a game over. You just play forever and have to eventually get a high enough score. So I was able to check a couple of these off my list with basically no problem. After all these easy effect modes, there are a handful that I consider kind of medium level difficulty, and I'll show you a couple of them now. These medium level difficulty ones drastically change how you play Tetris. Some of them almost feel straight up like puzzles. For example, check out All Clear Mode. This mode gives you boards where you only need a couple of pieces to completely clear every line in the board. You just need to figure out the right place to put each piece that they give you. Every time you complete a board, you're given a new one. So to get double S rank, you need to clear 30 boards before running out of time. You start with one minute, and you can get time back as you clear more and more boards. There are a set number of patterns that the game gives you, so eventually you start to recognize these patterns as they come up, and the mode gets easier and easier. That being said, as you get closer to that number of 30, the boards start to get pretty complicated, and it can take you a second or two to recognize the pattern that you need to do in order to clear the board. It was definitely a tricky mode, but after a good amount of practice, I was able to get it done. Combo mode is pretty similar to all clear. You need to get 120 combos to get the double S rank. Just like with all clear, you start with a minute on the clock and gain time by getting more combos. You get a combo when you clear lines with back-to-back -back pieces. In other words, you can't use a piece that doesn't clear a line. So rather than trying to clear every block as quickly as possible, you almost do the opposite. You try to use each piece to clear exactly one line so you can keep your combo going. Just like with all clear, you start to learn the patterns that they throw at you, and I was able to get double S rank pretty quickly once again. I'll show you one more mode that I consider to be medium difficulty. This is target mode. The goal of this mode will sound similar again. The goal is to clear 30 screens before running out of time. To clear a screen, you need to clear all of the flashing blocks. This mode is a little bit tricky, because sometimes you need to build your stack really sloppily in order to reach the flashing blocks that might be higher up. So it takes some time to get used to placing blocks non-optimally. You don't want to build this perfect stack with no gaps. Just like the other two modes, this took some time to get used to, but I eventually got it after an hour or two. Okay. Let's now talk about the two modes that were the biggest challenges in the entire Platinum. I'm not exaggerating when I say these two modes are some of the toughest gaming achievements I've ever managed to pull off. The first is Sprint. In Sprint mode, you play as fast as you can, trying to clear 40 lines. In order to get double S rank, you need to clear 40 lines in under 70 seconds. I think this mode, more than any other, shows off your raw Tetra skills. There are no gimmicks, you just need to go as fast as possible, build your stack neatly, and get Tetrises as quickly as you can. When I first tried this mode, I was averaging about 100 seconds to clear 40 lines, and so I needed to shave off 30 seconds from that time. Honestly, this just came with a lot of practice. Every night, I would play for a few hours, and every night, I would shave off 5 to 10 seconds from my personal best. One trick I used was I remapped the button to hard drop the piece to one of the triggers on my controller. I really felt like that allowed me to go faster overall. Other than that, my only other piece of advice is to take breaks. I would play for hours and hours and hours with very little progress, but then after taking like a 30 minute break, 
I would come back and my first run back would be amazing. In fact, when I finally broke the 70 second mark, it was on my first or second round after coming back from dinner. I was honestly stunned. I'd been grinding away all night and making very little progress, and suddenly the winning run came out of nowhere after just taking a short little break. So with sprint out of the way, we now only have one mode remaining. This is Ultra Mode. Ultra Mode is all about points. To get the double S rank, you need to get 35,000 points or more in 3 minutes. There are two strategies to tackle Ultra Mode. The first is to just go as fast as you possibly can. To get 35,000 points, you basically need to go at sprint speed for 3 minutes. When I was starting Ultra Mode, I tried this at first, and I was just nowhere close. I couldn't maintain that speed for 3 minutes straight. So I turned to the other strategy. Racking up points by scoring back-to-back T-spins using this strategy called ZT Stacking. Before I get into this, I have to say this is one of the coolest things that I've learned trying to go for a Platinum Trophy. I had to dive incredibly deep into the Tetris community to figure out how this works, and I really loved doing it. If you're going for this Platinum Trophy, I really recommend learning ZT Stacking. It's super fun. Okay, so let's start with the basics, which aren't too complicated. A T-spin is this special move that occurs when you use a T-shaped piece to clear some lines. But what makes it special is that you have to rotate the T-shaped piece around some overhanging blocks. You have to kind of rotate it around a corner and nestle it in in a T-shaped spot. You get a lot of bonus points for getting T-spins, and you get even more points if you can only clear lines using back-to-back T-spins. -back in other words, don't be clearing lines in other ways, only clear lines with T-spins. So, our goal here is that we have to find a way to reliably make T-spins available. This is where ZT stacking comes into play, sometimes known as ST stacking too. Zs and Ss are a little bit interchangeable here. ZT stacking is this method of creating these overhangs repeatedly, so you can make T-spins again and again. To me, it's absolutely mind-blowing that the Tetris community figured out how to do this, and I'll try to explain it to you here. ZT stacking works because of the way Tetris Effect orders your pieces. You might think that your piece order is completely random, but there's actually some structure to it. There are seven different Tetris pieces. Imagine those seven pieces are all put into a bag and shuffled up. You're going to be given those pieces one at a time as if they were being pulled out of this bag. When the bag is empty, you'll start over with a new bag of seven unique pieces. What this means is that the pieces are evenly distributed. You can still get a piece back to back. For example, let's say the L piece was the last piece of this first bag, but the first piece of the second bag, then you'll get two L's in a row. But what this means is that you'll never get an L piece four or five times in a row. So this is the first important part of ZT stacking. You'll never be overwhelmed by one piece showing up again and again and again. Since we know every piece is going to show up just as often as the other pieces, we can start to assign roles for each of these pieces. Each piece is going to play a specific job in our ZT stacking plan. So let's run through each of these pieces. The Z and the T are the easiest ones to explain. The Z piece is always going to end up against this right wall on its side, and the T piece is always going to be used to make a T-spin. You might be wondering what happens if you get two Z pieces back to back, because again, remember back to back pieces can happen, and you wouldn't want to stack two Z pieces on top of each other because then you'd close off the area where the T-spin is going to happen. So what do you do? Luckily, you have a spot where you can hold a piece. So if you get two Zs back to back, you can save one of them in your home slot. And since you just got two Z pieces in a row, you know that you're guaranteed to get a T piece before another Z piece shows up and you're out of luck. That T piece that shows up will clear some rows and open up a space for the Z piece that you've been holding. So we know what to do with our Z and T pieces. What about the other pieces? The next part of ZT stacking is focused on the three columns in the middle of the board. You want to make this repeatable pattern of a 3 by 3 block with a little nook cut out of the bottom right corner. There are a couple of different patterns that you can use to do this, but I found the easiest pattern was the S piece on bottom with an L piece sitting on top of it. Much like the issue that I was talking about with the second Z piece, sometimes you'll run into a scenario where you have back-to-back -back S pieces. And again, this is an issue because you need the L piece to finish that 3x3 block before using your next S piece. So again, you can use the hold to hold onto that extra S piece until the L piece shows up. So when I'm ZT stacking here, you'll often see this big middle column of S and L pieces just being put on top of each other. So this leaves us with just three more pieces, the I piece, the O piece, and the J piece. Luckily, these three pieces fit well together in the remaining four columns on the left side of the board. There are some general strategies on how to think ahead when using these pieces, but for the most part, I was able to improvise and just kind of put these pieces down as they came. And that's the basics of ZT stacking. 
If you follow these rules, you'll make repeatable little nooks that you can slide your T-pieces into and get T-spins and get tons and tons of points. Now granted, I'm skipping over some of the details. For example, in order to get this consistent pattern up and running, there's this whole setup stage where you need to use the first couple of bags of pieces in a very particular way. For example, you need to use the first two T pieces somewhere in the left part of the stack before using them to clear lines. You need to use one Z piece in the main stack as well. So there are all of these little rules that you need to follow in the opening of the game, but then you kind of transition into the mid game where this process is really repeatable for quite a while. Another little wrinkle is that when you've been running this mid-game engine for a while, making tons of T-pieces, you're eventually going to run into an extra S-piece. This is the problem that I was talking about earlier. You're going to need to find a place in the left part of the stack to throw this extra S-piece, and this is super complicated to do on the fly. This is usually what ended a bunch of my really good runs. I had this extra S-piece floating around, and I couldn't figure out what to do with it quick enough. There are all of these little complications and edge cases that the pros are able to handle in real time, and I never got anywhere close to being as good as they are. If you're interested in this, I really recommend going and watching a pro do ZT stacking. It's incredible to watch. It's super fun. After a lot of practice, I was finally able to piece together a run where I was able to ZT stack for a good two and a half minutes straight. And then in the last 30 seconds, I was just frantically trying to clear as many lines as possible in the old fashioned way. I was able to do that and finally get this trophy related to getting double S scores in every single mode in the game. So we're almost there, but to clean up the rest of the Platinum, there are two incredibly grindy trophies that I needed to finish. The first one is probably the most absurd trophy I've ever seen. You need to get 1 million total rotations. By the time I cleared the double S rank challenge, I had about 125,000 rotations. So I was just over a tenth of the way there after playing this game almost nonstop for two weeks. So this is maybe where I cheated a bit. I invested in a controller with a turbo button, put the game on infinite mode, and strap some rubber bands to my controller and let it run for hours and hours. I'm actually super high up on the leaderboards for the uh, time it takes to get this trophy. I think I'm number 25 overall, and this is probably why, because I was able to really accelerate this grindy trophy. Is this cheating? I don't really know. Leave me a comment if you think uh, getting past this grindy trophy in this way is not legit. For me personally, I don't mind at all. I had no interest in playing this game long enough to get to 1 million rotations, and I wanted my Platinum Trophy after learning so much about ZT stacking and getting through all of these like skill-based challenges. There was one more final trophy that my Turbo Controller couldn't help with. For the last trophy I needed, I needed to hit level 100 in the game. You get experience by playing the game, and just doing rotations with the Turbo Controller doesn't give you any experience. So I really had to play the game a little bit more. When I finished the Double S Trophy, I was around level 70, and it probably took me about 10 more hours to grind up to level 100. I think probably the most efficient way to get experience was to start a game, immediately die, collect your experience, and repeat. But I found that incredibly boring, so I decided I was just going to play sprint mode again and again until I got there. As a side note, when I played all of these extra games of sprint mode, I only got under 70 seconds one other time. So overall, I feel pretty lucky that I was able to do it relatively quickly when going for the double S trophy. But finally, I reached level 100, got my last trophy, which gave me the platinum. I love this Platinum, ZT stacking was a whole new way of playing, and I learned a ton about the Tetris community. If you want to see other difficult Platinums, subscribe to my channel and check out my video on Super Meat Boy. Thanks!